I hope that you keep purifying every day. Keep clarifying that which you are every day. Keep filtering it out from everything that you're not. And that actually brings me to the topic I kind of wanted to share with you, which is separation as a way into unity. I'm talking not about politics or anything. I'm talking about a direct spiritual path, a practice. So sometimes, I mean, there's many different direct paths, angles, gateways, and sometimes I'll share something that's more, has, has some separation elements in it, like I'm not this, I'm not that. And I've personally found that I am not this, I'm not that approach to be highly effective, all right? But sometimes, making these distinctions it sounds like we're saying uh, like there's a, a truth and there's a non-truth or there is a, a reality and there's an illusion or there is a, a right and a wrong almost spiritually speaking or correct and incorrect um, but really just see the separation as a way into unity and I'll explain a little bit what I mean by that the thing is, unity is simply the state of existence, the state of life as it is. There's no way around it. There's no way to argue with it. There is only one. So no practice can undo that. You've been conditioned by all the elements that you've associated with for all your life all the filters, all the objects that you filtered your sense of existence, your sense of being through, that has produced the illusory feeling or the feeling of the illusion of separation being real. And it doesn't really matter what you do at this point when this is already the case, when you already feel separation, when you believe in separation, then you know, it doesn't really matter whether you practice unity or separation. Um, and also it doesn't matter from the point of view of not being able to change the actual structure of reality, which is unity. So you can practice all kinds of separation, seemingly separation inducing practices, and it wouldn't make any difference in the unity and the oneness and the one that this all is appearing as. So. Ultimately, the Absolute One is realized and greater and greater unity is experienced and felt through, for example, the practice of separating yourself out from everything that you can experience. Right now, this self, the, let's say it's true self, they're just words, but let's say the true self, or you can call it mind space, or you can call it awareness, you can call it being, you can call it I am, you can call it that which you are, whatever that is. Right now, that has been infiltrated. It has collapsed itself around form, and form exists within the dream of imagination, within labels, within concepts, within descriptions. It has therefore spatial elements, temporal elements, and because the true self, which is absolute, one, formless, infinite, indescribable, free, freer than space, but in some senses it's like space, but it's even freer than space itself. You are even freer than space itself. That which you are, total unity, has been infiltrated by thoughts, sense perceptions, stories, names, filters, spatial and temporal realities or dimensional experiences. And you've been associating with those elements for so long that it has become challenging for most of us to kind of, in a sense, keep a quiet, empty, clear mind that is transparent to the natural state 
of this formless, space-like, but truly ultimately beyond space, existence, awareness, being, self. And so, again, you can't really separate anything out from anything. That's just more illusion. So it doesn't really matter. You've lived your whole life in illusion. So don't worry about trying to mimic unity in your spiritual practices when there's very effective spiritual practices, very direct spiritual practices available to you that can actually tangibly, pragmatically give you direct experience of oneness. But the practice sounds like separation. And in many ways, this does mimic politics, like not being able to see past the surface, thinking we choose for unity, but really choosing separation and thinking that that which brings unity is bringing separation. So it's, it's a little related, but I won't go into that now. I'm enjoying my retreat too much. And so to separate oneself out completely from the entire universe, the entire landscape of experience, the entire realm of consciousness, final separation, ultimate separation, is ironically realization of the absolute infinite unity. So if we take this natural, original, primordial space of what you are, this, for now, let's call it awareness. It doesn't matter. Ultimately, it's beyond even what we would call of, what we would think of as awareness. But the term does a good job at getting pretty close to infinite reality. Because awareness cannot be found to be anything, right? This is not awareness. This is not awareness. This is not awareness. I can't find it in my brain. It's this intangible, formless, space-like quality of I know of knowing pure knowing of being knowing being knowing being knowing knowing being being knowing so you can't put your finger on it you can't grasp it you can't catch it you can't kill it it endures it continues doesn't matter what appears it just endures it continues every appearance inseparably appears from it but again it has become associated it has become collapsed it has blended together with ideas that have appeared within this awareness, you could say, or alongside this, with this awareness. And if we start separating from these concepts one by one, so let's say I'm triggered about something and I investigate, okay, I'm triggered about the situation. This person said something to me and it, it gave me an emotional response perfectly fine just accept it but then investigate okay I have this trigger what must I believe is true what must I believe I am what must I have identified and associated with to be offended by vibrations in what appears to be air hitting my eardrum A person could have said the same thing if I was deaf I would not be triggered the same thing happened but I did not internalize it, I did not hear it, I did not perceive it, I did not interpret it, I did not give it meaning, I did not pass it through my filters of associating awareness with form, with ideas, with concepts. And if I find the concept, and usually it's multi-layered, multi-faceted, because we're conditioned in several ways, but then I can find things like, oh, I thought I was the body, I'm assuming I've associated with the body, and I've associated with being a personality inside this body, that I, I have to use this body to represent that personality, that truth that I feel is true. And I have to go out there in the world, and this is who I am. I have associated with this form, spatially, temporally, ideology-wise, thought-wise, belief-wise. And so it makes sense that I'm triggered because I, awareness, has associated itself with the body. Just one example. And the body is the culprit for most triggers and most experiences that feel personalized. For most of our delusions, the root of it is like the feeling that I am the body, the belief that I'm the body. Now, if we could take this awareness, this beingness, this knowingness, this pure space of knowing, and we could detach it from perceptions, from sensations, from thoughts, from ideas, from memories, so we could actually separate awareness from 
what it's appearing, what it's seeing, what it's sensing, perceiving, thinking, sense organs, and so forth, then we could have a more direct experience of that awareness. That awareness, in a sense, would be purified. And there are some people that would disagree with me, but I've just found over and over and over again that the spiritual journey is, at the heart of it, it's all about purification. Right? Um, it's got a bit of a bad rap in some religious circles, but really it is about purification because what you are is already complete. All right? And so in a sense, we never ever truly attain anything new. An attainment of something new, in a sense, is a rediscovery. Discover, you uncover, you separate the dirt, the filth, the associations out from the truth. You cleanse, you purify. Every time you purify that awareness, every time you separate that awareness from the elements it has become associated with or attached to, or you detach the elements from that awareness, that awareness purifies itself. And again, the separation thing is just semantics because you can't separate anything. So don't worry about it. Like, oh, this is a separation practice. We're all, we're everything. Yes, you are, but you can't realize that from the point of view of being the body. You just can't. Or the point of view of being a person. You just can't. You got to go beyond. You got to go beyond the mind stuff. And one of the most effective direct ways, pragmatic ways to do that is to separate yourself from everything. Don't make this into a, it's not a philosophy. It's not a philosoph philosophical stance to take towards life and the people that you meet and the, and the jobs that you do and your duties and honors. It's just a practice. So it's not about thinking in terms of separation. It's about distinguishing, making distinction, clear distinction, discerning between what you are and what you are not. Oh, but aren't we everything? We're, yes, but if you take the route of I'm not this, and I'm not this, and I'm not this, and I'm not this, you can very quickly, arguably most directly, most fast, realize unity. So separation, separating your true self from your false self is actually a way into unity. Because again, unity is not something that you will create. It's not an experience that you're going to one day have. It's the nature of things. It's the substratum of things, if you will. It's just the isness of things. You can't, you can't undo it. You can, it doesn't matter what you think. You can have a million separation thoughts and feelings every single minute for the rest of your life, and it would not put a single change or dent in absolute, infinite, unified, one reality. So it doesn't matter what you do, you see, in terms of spiritual practice. Like, you can't separate. So se try to separate that essence, the essential primordial knowingness, that super, super, super subtle, ultimately becomes experientially, becomes subtler and subtler and subtler and subtler and subtler and subtler. And every time you think it's the subtlest, the subtler. So if you keep going subtler, you continue to purify. You become subtler, you become pure. Your awareness starts to purify itself. It's its lens, its filter is purifying itself. So that perception becomes more and more transparent to the nature of things as they already always inevitably, inescapably, changelessly are. So separate your way into unity, spiritually speaking. Again, not a dogmatic belief, not a philosophy, not a relationship advice, just a spiritual direct path practice. Separate yourself from everything. Separate everything out from yourself. And you, when you hit what's left, okay, and, and the final stage of this, there's many sort of subtleties, subtleties, subtleties within the realm of awareness, within the realm of consciousness. There's many, many, many degrees of subtlety. And every time it's more spacious, it's more subtle, it's more indescribable. It has less and less to do with space and time and people and relationships and thoughts and conventional reality. The relationship to conventional reality seems to be less and less bridgeable. It's like ah, inexpressible. Mm. 
It's got nothing to do with conventional ways of relating and believing in reality. This is why spiritual practice needs to be taken at your own pace and deconstructing and, and separating these false elements out and, and making contact with those truer levels of your being, those more transparent levels, closer to the truth. It has to be done at your own pacing, but do, I suggest you do it. You, you meditate, you try this out, but it becomes less and less conventional, so you become less and less human actually experientially less and less human without suppressing anything without avoiding anything without denying anything without not being willing to acknowledge anything nevertheless you your knowledge of yourself your direct experience of isness of life of existence of being of truth becomes so refined so subtle that it's like two completely different worlds. Again, the separation element there, the apparent separation element. Because more and more your experience is that conventional reality doesn't really have any existence. All that's real is the state of awareness itself. And it has many states and flavors and changes and nuances and ways in which it can experience itself and filters and subtleties and levels up to a certain point. The highest level has no levels. Ironically, it's the highest level, but it has no levels because it's, it's the one in its most primordial, original, absolute, stateless state. And you can get there by separating yourself out in your spiritual inquiry, your meditation, your contemplation from everything that you can perceive. What typically happens initially when we start to inquire and we realize that, oh, I'm not this, I'm not this perception, I'm also not this perception, I'm also not this thought, I am also not this emotion. I have the emotion, nothing wrong with it, but I'm not, it's not what I am. It's just what appears, it's just part of the canvas of life. Again, totally allowed, totally accepted, nothing to push, we don't have to push anything away for spiritual practice. Separating yourself is not actually has nothing to do with not experiencing certain things. Um, so you can have an, a raging emotional state. You can have a raging trigger come up and still separate yourself from that trigger without denying the trigger. So actually, by separating yourself from the trigger, you can allow the trigger to be as it is. So it's also a more holistic path in most ways, even though it sounds to the service minded people like a practice of separation, like a philosophy of separation. It's not. Look beyond the service of separation, both in politics and in spiritual practice and your thoughts and your emotions and your perceptions. <laughs> so, where was I? Where am I? I'm in you. Anyway, when we separate ourselves, we it's like we drop into a, a deeper space every time. So you're automatically, right now, you're assuming something is true. You're assuming yourself to be located at some level, at some state, as some form, as some level of the body, as some level of the subtle body, maybe causal body, the mind, whatever you want to call that. And so at a certain level, you are identified with a particular position or filter. If you can notice that, it's like the background assumption, like, oh, I'm right here, I'm sitting right here and I have these things to do today. That can be in the back of your mind. That can be a subconscious feeling of identification. Take a deep breath. Notice the subtle tension that's always available to you in the background because of identification, because of associating that pure space of consciousness that cannot be described in its subtlest levels, which transcends space and time and form and objects and people, and realize that that consciousness exists almost as if on its own, free of form. Again, you can't, you can't undo reality, so it doesn't matter what you visualize or imagine here. 
as long as it's effective and this is effective so you separate that true self out from every other perception meaning you recognize it as it is and you allow everything that you're associated with to be not that not that not that let it drop out of the space or you drop into a deeper space however you want to sort of feel into this viscerally and every time you go subtler subtler ah oh, it's even beyond this ah oh, but i still have this edginess this sensation over here of location or this or that mm. and you drop that too every time you drop something that original essence that original space like but beyond space quality of knowingness pure knowingness awareness subtle nuance delicate pristine awareness blue sky like awareness begins to know itself more directly more purely without filters less and less filters <clears throat> and so your experience becomes super subtle and that's purification subtleification making yourself more subtle again Okay, so what happens as you drop, drop deeper and deeper and deeper, at some point there is this sense of oneness. Hmm? As in, it's almost like you're hitting sort of a, a threshold, a, like a wall, like a, a, a basin, basin. Like, um, like the edge of the bathtub or like the ground of the lake. It's like you, like you become the whole container, the whole cauldron, the whole holding space. For the entire energy of existence doesn't necessarily mean you're experiencing other planets and all points of view and all that stuff that's just imagination it just means that experientially intuitively directly you are feeling you're contacting the essential state of illusion the essential state of being where it's just awareness beingness being aware and it's like this very subtle space-like radiant essence that you somehow know at that level of subtlety when it's been purified from this and that and this and that and this and that perception and this and that belief and this and that thought and this and that distortion and you just enter into this super super subtle unconventional beyond conventional realities pure space of being of of god really this is where you feel like I'm actually resonating, I'm vibing with God right now. And as I deepen it, you begin to realize, wait a second, I am inseparable. I am that God. So again, separate your way into unity. So, but then even this oneness can be separated from. So this oneness being this awareness, if you manage to separate yourself from that entirety, that landscape, then what could possibly be left? Because you see, you're still looking at awareness pure awareness even though it feels like it is just awareness itself <laughs> you're still looking at it you're looking at god you're looking at the essential substratum the essential radiance which mix up everything that can possibly ever appear or appear to be the entire beingness which is aware which is pure space like knowingness yes one it's one it's non -se non separate it's non-dual awareness before that prior to that you are still looking at that so you're not even the universe so separate yourself from the entire universe of pure consciousness. And so this is the final stage of subtlety, where we actually disengage from the root cause of all experience, of all delusion, of all separation. So we separate from the root cause of all separation, which ends up in this perfected oneness which is not a oneness like god's oneness it's the one before oneness before whoa i'm everything you're not nothing but your the reality cannot be described as nothing
but you're not everything. What you are is not everything or beyond everythingness. Right, so the subtler we become, boom, 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 give things away, surrender, surrender, surrender. Oh, still feeling a perception, still feeling that sensation, give it away. Whoa. And we start to transcend space and time and location. It's this intuitive, instinctive knowingness. You could call it a feeling, but it's not really a feeling. It's a knowingness, it's a direct knowingness. It's subtle, it's unconventional. You can't talk to this about with people. You can't talk about this to people. You know, this is not a morning breakfast sandwich conversation. It's you can't relate it to any, it's got nothing to do with conventional reality already, not even at the absolute level. Before the absolute level, what you are has no relationship. It cannot be bridged to conventional reality, to imagination, because conventional reality is nothing but imagination and agreements and thoughts and concepts. How could any of that ever affect or touch what you are, which is this pure primordially, already pure space of awareness. And beyond that is the absolute infinite reality. Awareness is its first manifestation, its first expression, its first breath. So it's the closest that can still be described. Isness, beingness, awareness, consciousness, the essence, the substratum, the root, the, the empty ground of all beingness. That's the, that's, mm. It's, it's, it's the, uh, it's the subtlest that can still be hinted at and the, the descriptions don't do it justice, okay? God, God awareness, it's that subtlety of you, it's you awareness. That subtlety of awareness of you, which is already primordially pure, but you have to still purify it by separating from all the delusions and then you see that it was already pure then you realize like it's not a new thing it's always been the case it's always been the state of things the absolute cannot be described it's so it's beyond subtle it's like it's like not subtle it's subtle but it's not subtle it's like beyond subtle It's freer than space itself. It's much freer. Uh -huh. By a lot. You know, actually the best word for you, for what you absolutely are, the best word is not a term that points to a thing or a state. The best word is freedom. What does freedom look like? Can you find freedom? Can you like put it in your pocket? Can you give it to somebody else? True freedom, can it be taken away? Can anything touch it? Can it be grasped? Can it be scratched? Can it be dented? Can it be harmed? Can you put a flaw in freedom? If so, it becomes non-freedom. It becomes a distortion. It becomes an illusion. But ultimate freedom, freedom itself, is, cannot be reduced to a thing. And it's also a matching term because really the, the fragrance that is released experientially when you go beyond experiences is that of utter freedom, unspeakable freedom. The subtlest of the subtlest, the subtler you go, the freer you are from conventional reality. In other words, delusion, non-existent ideas. The freer you are, the subtler you are, the subtler you know yourself. The more refined, the finer, the more delicate, the more beyond, the more space-like, the more not this, not this, not this, not this, not this. The subtler you know, you intuit, you know you're convinced of yourself. The freer you are from non-existence. Because really, my friends, conventional reality is non-existent, but it's believed to exist. We believe, typically, conventional mindset is that we believe that what does not exist has existence. And therefore, we've obscured the real 
reality and therefore freedom same thing reality is freedom freedom itself is what is real freedom is reality suffering is illusion is non-existent So for the more advanced practitioners out there, I'd say one of the most direct ways is to maintain, in your, say in your meditation or your contemplation, your inquiry, maintain that subtle awareness of the substratum of all that is, meaning the container of which nothing escapes. There's not a single experience that could ever appear separate from, apart from that consciousness, that I amness, that root delusion that root radiance, that root prime radiant. Everything, like there's not a single perception that exists apart from the knower, outside of the knower, without the knower. You've never known anything without the knower, except the absolute or nothingness. If you're still in delusion, you'll call it nothingness. Sometimes I call it nothingness as a pointer, but it cannot be nothingness. Nothingness is not a thing. As Ra says, the dissolution into nothingness is the dissolution into unity, for there is no nothingness. The absolute reality, absolute, it's freedom. Nothingness is not freedom. Freedom is not nothingness. The absolute source reality is not nothing. Anyway, so you go to that sense of everythingness, that that root delusion, which you could also call enlightenment. Most people call it enlightenment. I call it enlightenment often, because it is. And a lot of this Indian scriptures, they'll say, in some of them anyway, they'll say, we go from ignorance to knowledge, or we go from unconsciousness to consciousness. We go from illusion, ego, ignorance, into pure knowledge, aka consciousness, or pure beingness, or pure I amness. The isness, the substratum of all that is. And then there are certain scriptures, not that many, but some, that will make an extra distinction that say both ignorance and knowledge, or enlightenment, are in a sense codependent. They are the same thing. They're made of the same illusion. And in fact, enlightenment, as in pure knowledge, pure knowledge of self, of being, is itself the first only and final delusion it's the root illusion so they call everything form-based maya or illusion and they call some of them they call this god state of knowledge of beingness this subtle all-pervasive awareness this radiance this natural primordial wakefulness they call that the root illusion or the great illusion mula maya Whereas most pointers point to this as enlightenment, as the end of the line. It's not the end of the line. It's, it's the end of the line of one end of the spectrum. We have ignorance, then we have knowledge. But both of that is made of the same stuff. Samsara, Nirvana, both, both made of the same isness, beingness. And perfectly fine, it's gorgeous. You still have that too, beingness. Beingness is still there. Even if you go, if you tap into what's beyond beingness, the beingness is still also available, but it changes, its gestalt changes entirely. Instead of being this, this presence, it's still this presence, but it's like empty. It's devoid of substance. Even though it's still there, it's to play with, if you will, to, to, to savor, to enjoy what, whatever you, you want to call that. It's just happening by itself, but... But it's still, it's the root illusion. It's the root experience. There's no experience that you're having. Now, you might not be aware of this, but every experience, no matter what it is, even unity, oneness, and but also separation, 
has you there, you as the emness, the beingness, the I amness, that consciousness. Otherwise, you couldn't report on the thing. You wouldn't have the experience. And even nothingness, unconscious nothingness, there's still a beingness there. There's still an awareness there. It's just not realized. It's just not practiced enough to be able to be that while you go unconscious. But you can. It's just extremely subtle and it requires extremely subtle concentration or realization to maintain that. And you can or you cannot, doesn't matter. It's not even crucial for realization of the absolute. It's just kind of a realization you can have like, oh, wow, I'm in deep sleep. But I still am. Oh, I went unconscious. But this beingness without any form or addition, this essential subtle being is still there. But then, like I said, if you separate from the beingness, and again, everything is beingness. So by separating from the beingness, not just the sensation of I am in the body, like, oh, the body is over here. When I say I am, I don't mean the feeling of the body sitting in this location over here, I am here and now, with the feeling of the body. That's not what I'm pointing to. That is a good initial stage to anchor yourself in, to not be like, oh, 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 oh. To bring your attention to your breath and your body and to feel I am over here right now. And to just become present to the feeling of your body. But that's not the I am itself. That's just a sensation that the I am is having. The I am itself is all pervasive. It's always there. It's formless. It's always there. Every sensation is the I am. Is the coloring in of the I am. The I am is always there. Inseparably from the appearance the sensation. So if you can recognize that more and more, make it all pervasive or realize that it's already all pervasive, sense that, feel that, then you can vibrate at that threshold of the universe, the threshold of everythingness, the threshold of God, of beingness, of isness. And as you start feeling that threshold, that allness, as you start approaching that bubble of existence, of creation, of the realm of experiencing, the realm of consciousness, the realm of this grand illusion of the cosmic dance. Woo! And you stay at that threshold, you become southern and southern, and you're like, fuck, I'm still looking at this. There's still something that knows this. It seems like it's knowing itself, but really I, from the absolute, am knowing still this. Therefore, beingness is an appearance too. And if it's an appearance, if it's happening in front of you, it cannot be you. So separate yourself from the beingness, which is the everythingness. And then you realize not that you're nothing, but that you're not everything. You're beyond everything. And what could be more free than that? Because then literally nothing in the entire cosmos, no, in no dimension, no past, previous, future lifetime, not even a god, not even death, can reach you. Because you are not everything. Everything is appearing. Death is appearing. Being born is appearing. The end of the universe is appearing. The dissolution of the universe is appearing. The birth of a new universe is appearing. But it's just appearing. It's like the windshield wipers when you're driving. It doesn't have to distract you. It doesn't define you. So separate even the root illusion of I am, of beingness, that subtle, subtle awareness. Separate that out from yourself and you'll be, you'll go like this. What the actual is this especially first time i mean it's always amazing because it's what is, is freedom freedom is amazing actual freedom is amazing but the first few times you're gonna go like what the fuck is that because you realize your absolute freedom your total beyondness 
And in that realization, you transcend both oneness and duality. Now, I realize all this is the direct path, it's the enlightenment path. I don't tend to speak so much anymore about the empowerment path, but I still value it at a relative level. I can still see its value, especially for the collective. Um, I may decide to shoot a second season of the Mirror Talks podcast, where we'll probably continue to combine these topics. And uh, I just wanted to tune in, send you some love from freedom, and remind you of your own freedom, your own ingraspability.